Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today we're making marbled cheddar. Well, marble cheddar is a variety that I came up with by myself. It is your basic cheddar recipe, which you've seen before, and it's probably one of the most popular videos on my channel with over, I think it's about 1.9 million views. So that just goes to show the popularity of cheddar cheese. In this variation, I've basically taken two five litre lots of cheese, uh, coloured one and not coloured the other. Uh, so it's made this marbled effect, or as Kim has said um, to me privately, that it looks like a map of the world with continents and an ocean. So I was kind of tossing up whether to call it planet cheese, uh, but I've stuck with marbled cheddar. Anyway, enough of me waffling, let's go and see how we made this most mysterious cheese. So a good cheese starts off with good milk and I'm using Inglenook Dairies uh, full cream unhomogenized. This is about 3.8% fat. So the ingredients for this cheese are 10 litres of whole milk or full cream milk, one eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic data culture, a half a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, single strength, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, 12 drops of annatto in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, and two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. So now we're going to be splitting this recipe in half because we want to use five liters in one pot and five liters in another, and you can see that happening there on your screen. So I'm just whisking back in any uh, hard bits of cream, and there weren't many, so I didn't have to whisk too hard into those two pots. So I'm going to change the recipe slightly as we go along, giving you the amounts that we need to add um, for each pot. So first of all, we need to heat the milk to 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. And you can see that I've done that with both pots. Might be a little bit over on that one, but that's okay. So we just give it a quick stir to make sure that the heat is distributed throughout before we proceed to the next stage and just take everything out of the pot. We don't need anything at the moment. And same for this one. So I'm not sure if you've actually seen me use this pot before. It's a uh, enamel pot and that, that seems to work fine as well. It's a non-reactive pot. Okay, so we're going to add the mesophilic starter culture, but we're going to add 1 16th of a teaspoon into each pot, which gives you a total of 1 8th of a teaspoon. So just sprinkle that over the top. Okay, now we're going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. So pop the lid back on both pots. and set the timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes later, we take the lids off the pots. And we're gonna give it a good stir so that the starter culture is mixed through the milk. Now I normally stir for about a minute to make sure the starter cultures are fully incorporated through the milk, top to bottom, bit of a splash there, but that's okay. So top to bottom stirring, just to make sure it's all the way through. Now there's no risk of cross contamination between these two batches because essentially they're exactly the same cheese, except for one small difference, and that's the addition of Anato, which is a safe cheese food coloring. So just stirring that through uh, once more. Just to make sure I've got all the starter culture mixed thoroughly through the milk. Okay, we're going to allow the 
milk to ripen now. So we cover both pots up again. We're going to ripen for 40 minutes at that target temperature. Now if you do find the temperature starting to rise, then just take the pots um, off of the, uh, the little pot that I've got on beneath. I think I had to do that with one of the pots. The enamel one held its heat quite well. The stainless steel one heated up a little bit too much. Okay, so after the ripening phase, we take the lids off again. And we're going to just check the target temperature before we proceed to the next step. Give it a bit of a stir because the cream is usually comes to the top during that stuff, that phase. So we're looking for 31 still. So yeah, a little bit on the high side, but that's not too bad. So that milk's okay. We'll check the next pot. And it's nearly identical. Well, it's a 32, so 0.2 degrees Celsius difference. So we're trying to keep them the same, but you know, the stove, I've actually got this one on a big burner and the other one on a small burner uh, at the front of the stove, so I don't have to reach across, but uh, I'm managing to regulate the temperature okay. Okay, this is where the magic happens. We're going to add our 12 drops of Anato into one pot only. Don't add them to both pots just to one pot and you can see how that colors the milk straight away it doesn't add any uh, taste to it there's no change in taste whatsoever it is just a coloring so give that a good stir through uh, the, uh, the pot that you just put it into so it's thoroughly mixed through Okay, on to the next ingredient. So we're going to add in the calcium chloride. So that's a quarter of a teaspoon into each pot. Uh, the total recipe called for a half a teaspoon. So quarter in that pot, give it a bit of a stir, and then quarter in the next pot. So this adds back some soluble calcium uh, because the milk has been heat treated, it's been pasteurized. Um, so we need to add some soluble calcium back in so the rennet can do its work and coagulate the milk correctly. So just stir that through thoroughly. So normally I'll do this for about a minute. Okay, back onto the other one. side of the pot there I just tried to get that off okay so that's cool that's all mixed in so the final ingredient is the rennet so we're going to add the rennet to the milk so that's a quarter of a teaspoon for each pot uh, total being half I'll speed this up a little bit so we stir for no more than one minute here usually it's about 30 seconds um, that I stir for that I've timed there we go. And then we're going to add the other uh, corner. Well, sorry, we'll just cover that one first. So no dust or hair gets into it. And we're going to add the rennet to the other pot. Just trying something fancy there over the back of the spoon. It doesn't make any difference, so I found. <laughs> just as long as you're stirring the milk when you pour in the rennet. So as, ag as again, uh, stir for no more than one minute. Okay, we're going to cover that up and we're going to allow the milk to set now at the same temperature, 31 Celsius, 88 Fahrenheit, for a total of about 40 minutes. Now, if you find that uh, the uh, curd hasn't set properly and you don't get a clean break at the 40 minute mark, wait another 10 minutes and uh, then check again. So that looks pretty clean to me. So that's on the yellow one. And then we'll check the white uh, milk. And that's clean as well. So I'm happy there to proceed uh, to cut the curd. 
So I'm going to get my trusty curd cutting harp out. And we're going to cut the curds into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. So I'm doing the horizontals there. Uh, the curds want to move around a little bit because they're quite firm. So just pull that out. And then we're going to do the white milk. And same thing, just spin that around. Now if you don't have a curd cutter like this one, the best way to do it is at a 45 degree angle. Um, and you can do that on both sides of the pot and you get the same sort of effect. If you get any large chunks then you can just cut that out with a spoon later on. Anyway, so we're going to get the trusty curd knife now and we're going to cut the verticals. So we do it uh, one way, we're still doing it uh, 1.25 centimetres or half an inch. That's what we're trying to achieve anyway. Takes a little bit of concentration this part. And then you do it perpendicular to the first cut. And get any bits out. Okay. So that's that curd cut. I'll just do once around so there's nothing sticking to the sides. All good, we're going to move on to the next pot now. I'll cover that just to cause. Okay, so same again. So do it one way, uh, as I said, cube size, 1.25 centimetres or half an inch. Or do your best. <laughs> Good thing about home cheese making is it's your cheese. Uh, however, if you do cut the curd too large, it will retain too much moisture. Uh, however, we'll probably get most of that out during the cheddaring process. So we're going to allow the curds to stand now and those little cubes to heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're going to pull the lids off and you can see a bit of expelled whey there on the top. The curds have shrunk a little bit. And we're going to gently lift uh, the curds and any large big bits that you notice straight away, just cut them with your spoon. So we're gently lifting this first few minutes. Now if you start uh, thrashing the curd at this stage, it does tend to fracture. Uh, if you're gentle at this stage uh, and cut any large cubes just with the edge of your spoon, then you'll find that you don't make mushy curd and, and, it, and it will work. It'll work perfectly. But you've got to treat it very gently for these first couple of minutes. And again, you can see I'm picking up the large ones and giving those a little bit of a cut with the edge of the spoon. Just the ones that are ble bleedingly obvious. Now it looks like I wasn't very good at cutting this time around. I think it was my um, curd knife uh, prowess that didn't, wasn't as good as it normally is because there's quite a few large chunks there um, and they really stick out in the, uh, the yellow milk or the yellow curds now. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I cut them as evenly as possible because uh, if you get too many inconsistencies, you don't get the right texture for the cheddar. I've certainly found that out in the past. So we're basically this stage alternating between the two pots of milk, um, just giving them a stir uh, one minute each time um, and cutting where necessary. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the heat on again. It was off before. So I'm going to heat the curds up again in a minute, but I'm just trying a bit of a trickery pokery there to get the things to work. It wasn't working properly. I had to put the one on the left on low and the one on the right on medium to get them to heat up at the same time. Uh, if you can work out a water bath method, like you've got a really big sink or something, it'll be easier to put both pots into uh, a big tub and then put the right uh, temperature water around that. So I'm slowly heating up the curds 
and there's not much of a variance. So I'm not measuring the temperature at the moment because the water had actually cooled down. So we're going to gently stir now for 45 minutes and we're going to slowly heat the curds up to 39 degrees Celsius which is 102 Fahrenheit. So still cutting the big ones if we need to and so this is about 20 minutes later and you'll see that the curds have shrunk and I'm not treating it with kid gloves anymore. I can give the curd a good stir um, and alternate um, between the two pots just to make sure they get even treatment. And we're making sure that we're not heating it up too fast either. Um, so so we just I just about a minute each time, stir one and then stir the other. I hadn't uh, fully graduated to the two-handed school of uh, of cheese making or cheese stirring, but uh, yeah, I was trying to concentrate on what I was doing. So you can see a fair bit of the whey has been expelled out of the curds. At this stage, like I said, it's about halfway through the stirring process. So with about five minutes to go, I, with the magic of video of course, I was stirring two pots at once because um, I felt that they needed to expel a little bit more whey so I needed to put my attention on both at the same time. So now I'm level 10 stirring. I've graduated from the uh, newbie class of one pot at a time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I did that for about 10 minutes. Anyway, so I think there's enough whey expelled. Uh, we're just going to check the temperature now, make sure that it's at 30, 39. And close enough with that one, 38.9. And we'll check the next one. And that is at 38.7. Yep, that's close enough. That'll do. Okay. So now we just pop the lids on and we're going to allow the curd to settle for 40 minutes to consolidate into one big lump. Uh, this makes it easier when we pour off the curd in a second. Okay, so 40 minutes later we're going to pour off the curd. Now you can keep the whey if you want to. Um, I was sick away at this stage. So we're going to drain each batch through a cheesecloth uh, and then give it a little bit of a press to try and consolidate it a little bit and then we're going to return the curds back into the pot it came out of. Now obviously I'm doing this wall with clean hands. Um, I'm, meticu I'm meticulous uh, washing my hands during the cheese making process. Okay, so easiest way to dump it back in is to just lift your cloth up and pop it back in. Now I'll press down in the pot again to consolidate that into one single mass. Give a little bit of a drain where I need to. I'm trying to form a curd mass there and I'll just move it out the way in a minute. Okay so that was the white curd that was in the stainless steel pot. Now we're going to just cut the slab in half just with your curd knife just down the middle. Nice and simple. Oh, that sounded like Bob Ross then. Okay, back to the yellow curds. And we're going to drain that through a cheesecloth lined colander. And we're going to return the curds back to the pot. So, yeah, it came out in a fairly big lump, which was good. Pressing that down again, just as I did the first batch of curds. Trying to drain out a little bit away before I return it back to the pot again. So this whole returning back to the pot business is actually called cheddaring. We're going to be doing a very rudimentary cheddaring process. Okay. So just put my cheesecloth back in place again and squeeze out a little bit. So we're going to let that uh, just rest. Oh, sorry, I've got to cut that in half in a second. Right, so we grab the curd knife again, cut it in the middle. There we go. So we've got two half slabs or four half slabs if you count both of them. Now we've got to keep that warm and what I had to resort to was 
filling up uh, both sinks with water. Uh, and uh, we, I let that first batch just wait, uh, rest for 10 minutes. So I'm draining off the whey now, and I'm gonna turn each of the half slabs over. They consolidate into a, a tighter mass, which is good. So let's turn that one over as well. And in that small sink there, you can see that there's water as well. That's warm water. Um, I kept it topped up with uh, hot water from the tap and that capped it at about 39 degrees. So I've got that resting at an angle and that's keeping that batch of curd uh, warm. So I'm gonna repeat that with the second batch of curd and just drain off the way there, add just a little bit out of shot. Uh, but we'll just turn those two slabs of white curd over as opposed to the yellow I did a minute ago. There we go. So we cover and we're gonna let it stand for another 10 minutes while it expels some more whey. And expel it does. So we're gonna drain, turn the curds mass, curd masses over in the pot, and then we're gonna cover and stand for another 10 minutes. Now by this time, uh, the curd halves are fairly firm um, and they're easy enough to turn. We won't have too many issues. You can see a lot of whey comes out. So I'm just pouring that back into the cheesecloth wine colander again and just flip those over. Okay. So 10 minutes later, do the same thing again. Sped up this time because don't want it to bore you. Okay, so that was 10 minutes now. One more time. Drain, flip them over, allow the rest. Now that was for 15 minutes, the last one. So that's a total of 45 minutes of draining, uh, of waiting. So final drain, and then we're going to put both batches into one pot because we're done with the separate, separate. Um, pots now. So I'll get rid of the other one. Okie dokie. So I'm going to rinse my cheesecloth. It's got lots of gunk in it. Lots of little bits. I didn't want those in the cheese because they'd cooled down and you don't want to try and consolidate cool curd into the warm curd. So we're going to line, use the same cheesecloth, line our basket. Um, that cheesecloth is warm so use hot water. So just put your curd onto a chopping board so you've got your two slabs of yellow, two slabs of white. I have chose to use my silver pot there. I'm gonna cut it into fingers. So two inch by half inch or five centimeter by 1.25 centimeter cubes. And if you think they're a little bit big, then break them up like I am there, just into thumbnail size pieces. Now this does take a little while, which is why I've sped it up. So I'm alternating the colours, so I do get a fairly even mixture in the pot. So because they're fairly thick, that's the reason I'm breaking them in half with my fingers as well. I do remember back from when we went to the cheddar factory in Somerset, um, oh, way back when in the early 80s, they actually had a machine that did this. They put the big chunks of curd like I've got there through this, like it was like a shredder and kind of basically roughly shredded the curd. So that's basically what I'm trying to emulate here is that shredding of the curd, um, making those cubes. Now the smaller size helps to increase the surface area of the cheese, of the curds, because when we come to the next bit, which is the salting, uh, it allows all the cubes to absorb more salt. So I'm going to get my non-iodized salt. Uh, you can use sea salt, as long as it doesn't have iodine in it. So that's not table salt in there, that's actually dairy salt. I just find that easier to dispense out of the, out of the little thing there. So we're putting both tablespoons into our curd. So that's two tablespoons uh, of cheese salt into our curds there. 
First time I made cheddar, I made a mistake and only used one and a half tablespoons. I highly recommend two tablespoons for this amount of curds when you use a 10 litre batch of milk. Okay, this is the second tablespoon. Must be the slowest salt pourer ever. Should have just taken the lid off anyway and sprinkle that all over the curds. So we're going to roughly, uh, sorry, not roughly, gently, we're going to gently mill the uh, salt through the curds. Uh, don't go too rough because if it starts to weep way, you know you've gone too far. So we're going to fill our cheese basket with the curds. Now try and alternate or look for um, pockets that look too much of one colour, is what I'm trying to say. We're trying to evenly distribute the two colours through the cheese to get this marbled effect. So I think I've fairly, I've done that fairly well there. So now it's time for pressing. So I'm going to just make sure that the cheesecloth, I'm just going to pull it down at the sides. Oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. There we go. Yes, because there was some caught up. So I'm just pressing down on the curds a little bit and pulling the cheesecloth tight I don't want too many marks in the um, in the first pressing on a fairly even looking. Okay, all good now. Now we can fold the top of the cheesecloth over, put the follower on top, and we're going to press it um, fairly well, not lightly, that's for sure. It's going to be about 10 kilograms, but now we'll have a look when the instructions come up in a second. So pop that into your press, and it doesn't matter what type of press you use, as long as you get the right pressure. I'm using a spring press, so I can tell when, tell when I've got about 10 to 11 kilograms of pressure, is that the spring is half closed. It's a guesstimate, and it seems to work very well for me. Okay, so we're going to press at 11 kilograms or 23 pounds or 22.5 pounds for one hour. So that's the initial pressing. This will help the cubes consolidate, consolidate together and uh, form the cheese. Now it will be quite fragile when you take it out after the hour, but if you're using a spring press, just make sure you tighten uh, after about five minutes and then about after 30 minutes. Okay, so that's put aside. I'm not pressing too hard. Okay, so remove the cheese from the press after that initial one hour pressing. And we're going to take it out gently out of the mould. Now we can see kind of what our baby, our marble cheese looks like initially. Now that's looking pretty funky. So you've got to be fairly gentle because, uh, as you can see here, the curd is not fully knitted together. Uh, make sure your kitchen's at, um, at around about 21 degrees Celsius. You don't want it much colder than that because uh, cold curds don't knit together very well. Uh, if they're warm, they will knit together a lot better. So room temperature is, is about 21 degrees Celsius. So that's what we're aiming to press our cheese at. Okay, so we're going to pop that back into the mould or basket. Let's pull our cloth up so we don't see any seams. Do our best there anyway. And we're going to just pull that up a little bit. Okay, pop the follower on. And we're going to press it at 22 kilograms or 50 pounds. That's a lot of weight for at least 12 hours. Now, I did check it at the six hour mark to make sure that the spring uh, hadn't opened up a little bit. It had, so I had to re-tighten it again. So this is the next day now. I'm taking it out of the press. And we're going to see what this baby looks like. Okay, that looks absolutely marvellous. So we're going to air dry the cheese now. 
So we can air dry that at room temperature for two days. It took about two days for me. If it's uh, more humid, it may take longer to dry. Uh, but you can see that those curds have knitted together uh, just wonderfully and they have formed some amazing shapes um, on the marbled cheddar. So take the time when you're making your cheese to bask in its awesomeness. It is one of the most awesome cheeses that I have personally made. Okay, put that aside for drying. So two days later, I chose to vacuum pack. So I got my trusty vacuum pack, my uh, Sunbeam food saver and I've cut the bag to length and I've popped it in and the weight of the cheese is 1.180 kilograms. So I'm going to ripen now at 10 to 12 Celsius or 50 to 54 Fahrenheit for 3 to 12 months. We turn weekly for even ripening. Now back to Gav. So before I forget, big shout out to Inglenook Dairy for providing the milk for this cheese, the marbled cheddar. As you can see, a little bit complex, bit tricky juggling those two pots at the same time. But once it got down to the cheddaring stage, it was quite easy just having the two pots in the sink uh, and uh, keeping the water warm and, and keeping the curd warm. So the trick to this cheese is to make sure that when you're pressing the cheese, that the curd stays warm. Uh, so it's gotta be a fairly warm environment. Room temperature's okay, just can't be freezing cold because what you'll find is the curd does not knit um, it'll stay like it did when you saw that shot after one hour of pressing. Uh, but now it's fully consolidated. It looks absolutely fantastic. So there you go. Now, if you like this cheese, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. And if you like this cheesy content, don't forget to subscribe so you get more cheesy content on a weekly basis. If you want the kit to make this cheese, check out our hard cheese kit over at Little Green Workshops. .com.au. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.